In this video, we're gonna talk about how to find your max heart rate and then how to calculate your heart rate zones and then how much time you should spend in each different zone. So we'll talk about the benefits of lower intensity zone one and two training. We'll talk about zone three training as well as higher intensity zone four and five training. By the end of the video, you should have a good idea of the benefits of each training zone and how to know which training zone you're in. So that way you know if you're making progress towards your running goals. Let's go and dive into it. Okay, so to start off, we need to find your maximum heart rate. All of the heart rate training zones are determined by your maximum heart rate. So that's the first step. Now you can do an estimate with a very basic equation, which is 220 minus your age. So I'm 28, for example. So 220 minus 28 makes my estimated max heart rate around 192 beats per minute. This for me is actually pretty close to accurate but for some people, this can be pretty far off. So what I would really recommend doing is a max heart rate test. You can do this with a specific protocol like the Bruce protocol. This protocol involves running for three minutes at each stage and getting progressively harder until you reach your maximum heart rate and you can't continue the test any longer. It's important that we're doing this in three minute stages. If you go out and you just start sprinting, then chances are you're gonna fatigue and tire out before you even hit your maximum heart rate. By doing the three minute stages in the protocol, you actually build up so that way you get to your maximum heart rate. Okay, so now let's assume you have that number. Maybe that's 190, maybe it's 175, maybe it's 185, but that's your maximum heart rate. Now that you have that, you can calculate each heart rate zone. We'll go ahead and get started with zone number one, which is from 50 to 60% of your maximum heart rate. So to calculate this, you would take your maximum heart rate times 0.5 and times 0.6. That's the lower and the upper end of zone one training. Now, zone one training is considered very light or very easy activity. This is more of a recovery zone and it would take a lot of training to really get a good aerobic adaptation from training in this zone. If you're just going out for a walk or a hike or a leisurely activity, then this might be where you end up in training. It's great for health, but we probably want to go a little bit faster if our goal is to train for a half marathon or a 5k or something like that. Okay, now let's move on to zone two. And zone two training is from 60% to 70% of your maximum heart rate. For me, this works out to around 115 to 134 beats per minute. I would consider zone two true aerobic training. This means that the adaptations that you're getting from running in zone two are truly to your aerobic system. Oftentimes we consider our runs in zone two to be low intensity steady state or LIS training. There are a lot of benefits to running in zone two. This is really good for building your aerobic base. This helps upregulate fat burning and helps you use fat as a fuel source when you run. And it's also very recoverable. I mean, you can do a lot of it without getting fatigued and burnt out. If you're an endurance athlete training for an endurance race, then it's a good idea to spend a lot of your time in zone two. And just know that you might need to alternate between running and walking to keep your heart rate low enough to stay in zone two. All right, next we have zone three training, and this is more moderate intensity. So for zone three, we're between 70% and 80% of our maximum heart rate. For the average runner, lactate threshold falls somewhere in the middle of this zone, around 75 to 80% of your maximum heart rate. For really well-trained athletes, their lactate threshold may be 85 or 90% of max heart rate. But because most people have a threshold within this training zone, this is sometimes called the threshold zone. Oftentimes, if you just go out the door and you run kind of hard for 30 or 40 minutes to where it feels like a good run, a lot of times you'll end up in zone three. If you're only training for maybe a few runs per week, maybe 30 minutes, two or three times a week, then it's probably not a bad idea to do all of your runs in the threshold zone. But a lot of runners, whenever they try to scale that up and train for a half marathon, for example, and they go from training three times a week to four to five with more and more mileage, and they do it all in the threshold zone, they can get kind of fatigued and burnt out from doing a lot of training right at threshold. Also, because it's kind of this gray area where it's not really aerobic and it's not really anaerobic, they're kind of missing out on some of the adaptations from the other zones. So oftentimes I'll recommend my runners slow down a little bit on some of their runs and go below threshold into zone two for some of their longer distance work and then keep some of their faster speed work at even higher zones four and five. That said, it can be really beneficial to do zone three threshold work specifically as you're leading up to a race because this is gonna give us race specific adaptations. We're gonna be training right near our lactate threshold and pushing that lactate threshold up and that's really important whenever it comes to a race. 
The way I typically recommend doing this is by running 15 to 30 minutes at threshold with about a minute or two in between if you're doing multiple efforts. So that could be 20 minutes at threshold in zone three, two minutes walking. 20 minutes in threshold in zone three, two minutes walking, four multiple sets depending on your training volume. By contrast, a lot of your hour long or 90 minute long runs, we wanna keep those more towards zone two. Okay, now let's get into zone four. And this is where we're starting to get very anaerobic, meaning this is above our lactate threshold for most people. This is between 80 to 90% of heart rate max. This zone is where we work on our speed endurance or the capacity of our anaerobic systems. The way we might do this is with shorter intervals anywhere from two to 10 minutes or so. These workouts usually feel pretty tough and I usually only program them once or maybe twice a week. As an example, incorporating some zone four training into our hybrid athlete training program involved three minute intervals in zone four with three minute walk breaks in between. Again, depending on your training volume, you might just do two or three sets of these or you might be doing five or six sets. And then lastly, let's move on to zone five. And this is the hardest training zone from 90 to 100% of heart rate max. This is where we do true high intensity interval training. Typically, this zone has the lowest volume of any zone for endurance athletes. I recommend maybe one workout per week where we're pushing into truly hard 10 to 20 second efforts. Importantly, you're not gonna be able to necessarily look at your watch and during that 10 or 20 second effort, see your heart rate go up that much. It often takes a few seconds or even minutes after your workout or after you hit that high intensity for your heart rate to really catch up to the activity that you're doing. So oftentimes these workouts are based on how you feel in your effort and you just wanna go really hard for a short duration of time with adequate rest in between intervals. As an example, you might be going for 10 seconds on with two to three minutes of rest between efforts. That's gonna allow you to make those 10 seconds really high intensity and push all the way to your max. So as you can see, there are benefits to each different heart rate zone. Based on the goal of the run that you're doing, you might choose one zone versus the other. For those really long runs, maybe you're choosing to be in zone two. For those race specific 20 minute efforts, maybe you're choosing zone three. For those intervals where you're just pushing for three or four minutes, maybe you're choosing zone four. And then for your really high intensity work of 10 to 20 second fast bouts, maybe you're pushing into zone five. If you're interested in following a running program that also includes strength training, you can check out our hybrid athlete program in the description below. That's the exact program that I do to combine running with strength and even plyometric training as well. I'll also leave a link in the description below to all the running products I recommend if you want to check those out. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.